Well, it's been a while, but I finally got the opportunity to do it. Let's talk about With a Mind to Kill, the latest official James Bond book. Stay tuned. Hi guys, it is me, and I am really excited to talk about With a Mind to Kill, the latest James Bond book from Ian Fleming Publications, uh, the third and final book by Anthony Horowitz. Um, I haven't been this excited about a book for a while. And it, it's funny, I think it's all down to the James Bond community. It's like the over the last few years, especially since the pandemic, like a community of Bond fans has popped up. We've got our godfather, David Zaritsky, has like really created this wonderful community of Bond fans. And in a way that I'd never seen before, when the new James Bond book by Anthony Horowitz was announced, you know, it was everywhere and everyone was excited about buying it and everyone was posting pictures of them with their, their copy hot in their hand. And I was like excited to buy this book. I always like to talk about why I, I bought a book. And this one was a no brainer. As soon as it was available, I went to Amazon, I clicked, bought a hardcover copy, it received it the next few days. And I was reading another book uh, by a member of the Bond community, uh, Terence uh, Lehu, and I actually finished that one first because I was really enjoying it. But I was so stoked to read this and become part of this conversation about the latest James Bond book. I haven't been that excited about a book or a thing since, probably since No Time to Die. It's, it was kind of a lot of fun. So anyway, what did I think of this book? Well, um, I came off this having read Forever in a Day, which is the second Anthony Horowitz book uh, in his three book run writing sort of yeah, writing period James Bond adventures. Forever in a Day was a prequel to Casino Royale it was a terrific book. Like I've read all of the continuation novels of James Bond from like Colonel Sun right through all of the um, John Gardner ones, all the Raymond Benson ones uh, Raymond Benson he, he was he was the, the author who supported my teenage, uh, teenage years and uh, I really have loved the Anthony Horowitz books. Forever in a Day was just great, great stuff. Um, this book is technically perfect. Like, this is the best James Bond writing Anthony Horowitz has ever done. It's a really, really well-written book. It's super engaging from the first page. And it is written in... That, that amazing Ian Fleming style that Anthony Horowitz has has perfected and that's both the blessing and the curse with Anthony Horowitz's books Anthony Horowitz is a fantastic author of his own right I mean the Alex Ryder series is iconic he's um, written stories about James Bond uh, sorry Sherlock Holmes characters which are again chef's kiss but um, the only complaint I normally have about Anthony Horowitz is He's such a craftsman when it comes to writing. You almost reach this uncanny valley uh, with his style of writing the James Bond books. It's like, it's so like Fleming. It's almost more like Fleming than Fleming was because Ian Fleming, for, for the amazing things he's contributed uh, to literature, you know, he wasn't the best writer. I think we have to admit that. He came up with amazing ideas that have inspired this iconic franchise. But there are flaws. There are very obvious flaws to his books. Whereas Anton Horowitz doesn't... Uh, he's aware of the flaws of Ian Fleming's writings and he doesn't fall into the same uh, pit, pitfalls that uh, Ian Fleming does. And in some cases, that, that has this kind of like uncanny valley effect where he writes better than Ian Fleming does. Um, it sounds bizarre. I must sound like a crazy person saying that. But I kind of felt that with this book. It was really engaging. It felt like it felt like Ian Fleming on steroids. The thing that really got me though was I didn't enjoy it as a ride. It was really weird. It's technically a perfect book. So well written. And the plot is really, really coherent and tightly put together. And Anthony Horowitz creates some really great characters. Uh, the the way he describes James Bond going to Moscow into the center of Russia, somewhere James Bond's never been in the books before. And like he paints such a vivid, historically accurate uh, vision of what the misery living under communism was, which I love and bless him for. 
because like Anthony Horowitz, seriously, there are there are people these days who have like you know, a bunch of uh, hipsters have like this this romantic view of communism, and I'm so pleased that Anthony Horowitz just writes what a miserable, horrible thing communism was and how oppressive it was, and it really matched. You know, when I've spent my time in Eastern Europe speaking to to people who've actually lived under communism. It's really nice to see, you know, an author actually making that vivid and come to life and explaining it in a way that resonates with you as a reader. And it's a great, like, it's a great juxtap juxtaposition between James Bond's extravagant, luxurious lifestyle and the, the horrible misery and oppression of, of actual communism. It's great. I really enjoyed that. But it's a kind of grim story because of elements like that. I mean, James Bond, uh, having been brainwashed by the KGB, goes to Russia and he gets embroiled in this um, this conspiracy and it's grim and it's dark. And James Bond himself is like a grim and a dark character. And in some ways that's brilliant because that is absolutely where he probably was in his head, maybe after the man with the golden gun, but maybe he wasn't. Uh, and I think that that's that's a thing. Every single continuation author, when they write a, a James Bond book, they kind of create their own verse. So, like, you know, there's the Gardner verse and the Benson verse, and uh, when William Boyd wrote Solo, which was kind of like this book. Solo was set after The Man of the Golden Gun, and it was, you know, the Boyd verse, and that was James Bond according to, to Boyd's viewpoint. This is James Bond according to Anthony Horowitz's viewpoint. And I don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily gel with me. Um, I was very lucky to be part of the James Bond book club when we looked at The Man with the Golden Gun, which is Ian Fleming's last book, which this is set afterwards. And there was a certain brightness and optimism to The Man with the Golden Gun. It was almost like, at the end of it, you know, James Bond was in hospital and Felix Leiter was there and James Bond was going to go off and hang out with Mary Goodnight and he was kind of like... Pip, pip, stiff upper lip, cheerio, let's go and get them, boys. There was actually a, a certain optimism, a brightness to the conclusion of The Man of the Golden Gun. And this book just goes straight that down into, like, the grimness. And I didn't enjoy that. That's such a weird thing, because it's a good book. It's a brilliantly written book. It's technically so, so good. It just it didn't take me on the journey I wanted to go on. And yeah, I think that's that's the ending the, that's really my conclusion of it I, I thought it was a brilliant book and I really enjoyed reading it I read it on a flight to Paris um, in about a day but I just would have liked it to be a bit brighter and end on a like brighter note I mean I understand that this is Anthony Horowitz putting his you know the nail in the coffin of his three book trilogy I don't know who they're going to get that could be better than Anthony Horowitz but uh you know, this is the conclusion of his story arc. And it just concludes on a very downer note. And it kind of just makes me feel sad a bit. I think because I was so excited about this book as well, I kind of left like, Ugh, on a bit of a downer. Um, but I'd be interested to know what you thought. And, uh, there, yeah, I really would be interested to know what you thought about it. And, in fact, uh, my mate, Bond's Basement and I are going to record a little uh, podcast on Friday where we're both going to discuss this. I'm really excited by that. So I'll make sure to share share links with that um, when it happens. But I think the, the most exciting thing about this book is going to be discussing it now. There are so many people who I know have read it who I really want to hear uh, their opinions about it. And so, yeah, it's going to be so much fun to dissect. Um, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great book. This is an essential purchase for any James Bond fan. I mean, the contemporary James Bond books have been so good recently. When I say contemporary ones, the, the continuation novels recently have been so good. You know, the Gardner ones, they're just churning them out. But now Anthony Horowitz has just got such craftsmanship to his writing. We've got um, Kim Sherwood is about to, to hit us with the Double O trilogy. So the literary James Bond is alive and well and going places. This book is definitely one you need to read if you are part of, of that community. But um, I preferred Forever in a Day, not going to lie. Forever in a Day is like my perfect Horowitz book. 
and I'd be interested to know whether you share my opinion. So leave a comment down below and uh, we'll have a chat about it. Anyway, stay tuned. I'll be back with more book reviews soon. Pawn's Basement and I are going to be chatting about this uh, in a week or so. And until then, stay cool. Or, I don't know, I don't know. Stay cool? What kind of sign off was that? Oh my god, I can't, I'm not good enough to get away with it. Stay cool. I'll, I'll see you later. Bye bye. 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 I'm Roland Hume. I've sold 67,000 copies of my books. If you want to find out how I did it, I've got a link right here you can click. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you.